Welcome back. My way, a very nice song. Now we turn our attention to politics and history in Tunisia. Madame Mariam Burki Ben Yam you have joined me in the studio. Welcome to RTC, ladies. Hello. Hello. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Thank you for accepting the invitation. So, who is Madame Mariam Burki Ben? It's a long story. In, well, I start, well, in Tunisian, I start by saying that I'm Maryam bin Tahrib bin Harib Burkiba, mm -hmm. uh, which usually um, gives me an etiquette. Mm -hmm. And then I spend the rest uh, of the other, <laughs> or, 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 you know, the rest of the interview justifying myself. Justifying yourself. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, uh, we are very much in the, uh, uh, it's a la mode to uh, give etiquettes to people mm -hmm. without even um, getting to know the person. You were born in the US? I was born in, uh, yes, I was born in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. of diplomat parents, mm -hmm. and the reason why I was there. I was born in the JFK period, uh, but I didn't stay long enough to remember that time. Mm -hmm. uh, my father decided to come back to the country to, um, uh, to bring his three children up in the country. How would you describe President Habib Bourguiba to the new generation? Uh, that is a difficult question for me because, um, well, he was my grandfather, of course, although mm -hmm. so little when he was president. Um, he was um, he was a very clear-minded person. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a genius that I cannot deny that. Uh, clear-minded person, a very willful person, mm -hmm. but at the, and at the same time a very um, honest. He had an integrity that did not fail, and there was, you know, it, it, in fact, it made him inflexible at times. Uh, some would, would say that it made him inflexible at all times, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe not. Um, he uh, genuinely. Um, a belief that he could make a difference to other people's lives for the better. That was his calling. That's what he was, he generally believed he could do. And he did it in, uh, in I think, in a, a lot of degrees, a lot of levels. What do you say to his critics? Well, depending on the criticism. If it's a criticism uh, um, issued from propaganda and defamation, I'd say, see you in court. Mm -hmm. Uh, others I say, well, maybe, but um, uh, there is, there are a lot of good things, mm -hmm. a lot of bad things, and one has to really uh, very um, coldly, I would say, or at least very rationally, because he was very much into ration, rationalization, uh, rationally um, uh, balance mm -hmm. um, the two, the two sides. Do you know that we had just one page about Burkina in the history books at high school? You did, yeah. I had so many books, I haven't even read them all. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's this what comes, that's what's come from being from the family. You are supposed to know absolutely everything about the person, mm -hmm. which I hasten uh, to add, I don't. What do you remember from the 70s and, and early 80s? Uh, the 70s and early 80s, personally, um, uh, I remember um, some difficulty in, my, in our family life, well for me personally, not mm -hmm. the family, but at least for me. Um, my father had had a stroke in 71 and um, it was, it was um, a shock for me. Um, and we uh, basically decided as a family to be even closer knit, if that were possible and we tended to be a little bit insular. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, uh, you know, 70s, I was seven, uh, in 1970 I was seven years old, so it was, you know, a blissful uh, childhood, I guess, because I had a very, um, a very loving family, very supportive family. I'm still talking about the family unit, the, the small family mm -hmm. unit, that it would be uh, my parents, my brothers, and my grandmothers. Um, um, Politically, I will always remember um, that I didn't feel it didn't feel right this uh, life presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, the the suddenness of the uh, 
a very short-lived um, uh, unification with uh, the Jerba Treaty. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember that. Unification with, uh, mm -hmm. with uh, Gaddafi, Gaddafi. Uh, was sudden and, uh, as far as I was concerned, a bit irrational. And um, I started feeling very uneasy about what was happening. I felt it as a very slow but sure slippery slope. What about your father? My father never talked to us about it. Why? Uh, first because he was my grandfather's uh, conseiller at the time mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that meant he had, uh, it was his job and he had a, um, uh, a duty of reserve. Mm -hmm. And second because uh, the person was his father and he had a, a filial duty to his father. <laughs> Well, I, I'd like to um, direct a little bit the conversation towards something else. I mean, Adnan mentioned That's that great. in his uh, high school curriculum, there was only one page about forgive that, you know, and, you know um, and, and right now, I don't know if, uh, if you agree, but we're seeing the sort of movement or, or sort of, um, I wouldn't say a fashion, but there's a trend nowadays mm -hmm. in Chinese in politics. I'll ask you the It's a campaign. It's a campaign. Call it so. campaign. Yeah, yeah. I Absolutely. wanted to ask you. I mean, a, a she has used the term. She has said yeah. propaganda campaign. Yeah. So mm -hmm. directly, mm -hmm. is there is there a defamation campaign against your father? I. You that's what I feel. I'm, I'm becoming. I'm, I've come to see and to. That's the conclusion that I'm getting to. Yes. It looks very much. It sounds and looks very much like there is a, a deliberate and organized, orchestrated campaign uh, to discredit totally. Uh, the person, uh, the, the, the man of uh, state, mm -hmm. and the person. Mm -hmm. uh, the man of state, if they discredit it, they discredit their own history and their own identity. And I'll certainly uh, leave it to the, uh, to the experts, mm -hmm. to, the, um, historians. to the historians, and to the sociologists, to you know, all the different experts, the, the universitaire, what we call them. Um, I, I will leave it to them to um, to find a way to do and say the right things. Do you think the defamation campaign started in November 1997? I'm not sure if there's still there is already a defamation per se mm -hmm. the camp in the campaign. A few different a few people have intimated, mm -hmm. but nothing very forward except for one or two. I guess. Do you think it started in November 1987? It started. Oh, it started before that. I'm sure. Uh, but not the defamation. The campaign of uh, yes, it definitely started there before eighty-seven. Yes, yes. The the undermining of 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 uh, Burkiba at the time. Yes, was definitely there. W what I'm talking about now is is what what I what I see is about trying to discredit the person so that you won't get any any page on Burkiba at all, mm -hmm. or the page will basically talk about the. Um, um, uh, the uh, trial of Bogiba. Mm -hmm. And we all know that in the 13 years before his death that he was imprisoned yes. mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. trial. Uh, they, you know, Ben Ali, in, his, in all his uh, 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 security might and interior ministry uh, mm -hmm. experience, um, has uh, seemingly not found anything to try Bourguiba on, but it looks like some other people have found something, but we haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying uh, my, is... What I'm saying is that um, whatever is happening now, if it wasn't found and it wasn't produced in the era of Ben Ali, then the question is, do they really exist? Mm -hmm. Because frankly, all those archives are still very well kept. Do Nobody opened them unless they've been open but kept under wraps mm -hmm. and uh, you know shafafia is the buzzword since uh, since January 2011 we'd like it to be um, to be um, uh, to be given to everything you know to be uh, used in every domain so does many in Bergibo, does your party in particular are, are we calling for a, a national debate or a national... I wasn't talking uh, in the name of the party, yeah. I'm talking about Meryem Bergiva, yes. So, Meryem Bergiva, are you, are you calling for a national debate about uh, Bergiva, about the whole, the archives? 
the national debate on the archives has to be opened and it should not mm -hmm. be the uh, the sole prerogative of the of the government mm -hmm. uh, especially in the in this uh, transitional period every part of society and uh, every citizen have a, has a right to their history mm -hmm. good or bad painful or joyful they if every single one mm -hmm. has the right for, uh, to their uh, to their history and um, and um, this in fact uh, links to the uh, to the uh, just uh, the transitional uh, justice uh, so you've got the archives but you've got the rest as well I mean mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're talking about victims and everything and well ironically Bourguiba was a victim too and uh, yeah. nobody, nobody, I haven't heard anybody say, well, maybe he is entitled to some conversation. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you want to, to go that way, you have to go all the way. And that's why we need transitional uh, justice. We need proper, transparent uh, um, uh, um, uh, framework mm -hmm. and, and no blind uh, witch hunt. President Bourguiba spent 13 years in Monastir. I've said that. In prison. In prison, you like to use this term yeah, because it was yes home arrest as a form mm -hmm. of prison. It's 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 not only home arrest. He wasn't allowed the uh, um, the visits that uh, uh, you know freely. Mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't allowed uh, correspondence. Mm -hmm. He wasn't allowed uh, the telephone. Mm -hmm. What do you call that? We were not even allowed to bring him food. So what do you remember from that period? Um, what do I remember from that? I remember uh, a person who was very strong because uh, one must remember that before at 56 he had spent 11 years in prison too. Um, uh, I so remember the his valets, uh, the valet and the, you know, the majordomo, the, uh, the butler, his butler, uh, his valet, um, uh, being very nice with him, uh, mm -hmm. good to him. Uh, didn't stay till the end, but um, uh, uh, I remembered uh, that uh, a, um, uh, a butler who I saw again in in Qatar afterwards as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they remember him with uh, with fondness. I remember this um, this this historical man, and uh, it made me remember his uh, his one of his favorite poem. You know, the Mort de Lourdes. He was slowly dying, but he was dying but with pride. He did what he had to do, and he uh, and he yes, asked please. as well to be tried. On three or four occasions, he sent a letter really? to the uh, procureur de la République and to the president of. Uh, it's the, the first time that we hear this. Uh, well, uh, he, he 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 was trying to reach those two people. I'm in house arrest. Good. When's the trial? Mm -hmm. You know that uh, President Habib Bourguiba has often been blamed for remaining in power for more than 30 years. He could have started the democratic process. Yeah. That's what his critics say. What do you respond? I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, it's uh, one of the one of the, uh, reserve, the uh, reserves that I had. Mm -hmm. I was young and I was 17 in 1980 and I really wanted to have something else. I was uh, brought up with Republican values, his values, and I didn't see it, them, uh, exper you know, I didn't see that the experience was there. Um, uh, blame, blame him, yes. Do you think it was but just there theory? Wa it, there was no crime involved yet. Yeah, but do you think it was just theory, talking about democracy and talking about... No, he generally believed that, first of all, you had to have a full belly, mm -hmm. you had to have a full head, yeah, and, but well filled as well, before you start talking about democracy. Mm -hmm. Because frankly, if you, if you, uh, if you have uh, uh, poverty, and if you have day-to-day -day survival mode, mm -hmm. I think democracy isn't really your priority. And you can see it now when you go around in, in, in the country. I have, I have something yes, to, to yes. ask you. Uh, there's often criticism, uh, as you know, and, and especially now, there's so much criticism against Bolivar. One of the criticisms that I know somehow need to be responded to, and you've said that you'd rather leave all the response to experts because you believe in a rational, and uh, uh, you know, proper response to this. Mm -hmm. I believe in the institutions. You have an a, institutions. A, a, you have a legal institution, mm -hmm. and you have an academic institution. Right. Hopefully, those two might, will get uh, their uh, reform in the, you know properly, and uh, they can have the freedom and the independence 
to go about it. One of the criticisms that's, that that was launched against Rogiba was the fact that he seemed mm -hmm. to have repressed certain, uh, you know, entities in Tunisia yes. or certain uh, people who belong to uh, Islamist groups, etc. And not only Islamist groups, we're talking communists, yes. we're talking perspectivists, yeah. we're talking uh, uh, Yusufin in, in, yeah. Yeah, in Somehow the early people years. are saying now that this rise of, of fundamentalism in Tunisia that we're witnessing is related to Bourguiba really? and then what you talk about? And so the, the rise in Islamism in, uh, in Syria is, is related to Bourguiba as well? Yes. Not really. Yes. This is Really? No, no, no. I'm not saying yes. I'm saying this is what I mean. This is more or less the image that. That's what they claim. There is what they claim. That because there was a repression of and and an, and a lack of promotion of there religious is a studies. That in, in one in cannot deny there will have yeah. to be a reaction, and exactly. any any repression will have a. But what I can see as well is that uh, there has been a reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, is, was was there such a, a strong reaction with the other repressed? I'm not seeing it. Yeah. What's your vision of the new Tunisia and Marine Bourguiba? Uh, a republic. First of all, I, uh, I need to insist on the word Tunisia. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a national identity that I believe was reclaimed in, on, on the 14th of January, mm -hmm. tentatively rec reclaimed on the 14th of January, and since has been diluted in all sorts of uh, diversion. Um, uh, so, uh, first of all, one has to be very, uh, very clear on who, who a Tunisian is, and if if each and every citizen really looks long and hard inside mm -hmm. him or herself, they'll know it. Yeah. The, the last question. You will ha just have one minute, and you'll have to come back. Why did you choose a Jumhuri instead of the story party? I chose a fair. In fact, I didn't really choose. Then you moved choose to Jumhuri. Mm -hmm. because I was one of the founding members. Uh, we just we were a, a, a group of people who decided to um, try and um, apply our values mm -hmm. and our principles of um, a republic, a democratic republic, uh, that has uh, its uh, roots in different uh, uh, different uh, civilization, mm -hmm. um, the, the last and the most important of which is mm -hmm. the civilization, mm -hmm. but the Tunisian way, again. Do you think Al-Jumhuri will impose its program, its plan and its uh, its vision of, of, uh, of the political I believe so, because ironically when you look at the programs, if you look, because the, the problem now is that there is a lot of uh, discussion about all these different parties. Mm -hmm. But if one takes the time to read programs, they'll see that a lot of programs are, are very, very similar. And that's yeah. not different between uh, the ex PDP and ex FF. And yes, uh, we've, uh, find, um, we've um, uh, put our heads together mm -hmm. and our hands together. And we are nine parties. 15 independent lists uh, uh, from all over the, the country, not just, we're not talking yeah. just, uh, you know, the, what they call the, the coastline uh, parties, um, elitist parties, they call it, uh, and uh, another 25 person independent personalities. Mm -hmm. um, so we're getting there. One final question about your message to the Tunisian people who are listening to you on the National Service of Radio Tunis. How would you describe Happy Bourguiba at the end of this program? Well, Into Bourguiba, three words. The, the success of Happy Bourguiba was one to know everybody. Mm -hmm. He spent countless time, you know, weeks and months going around everywhere, yes. talking to them in their own language and not a, uh, a language that was alien to them. Yeah. Uh, his success mm -hmm. is because he could federate between those those uh, Tunisians, mm -hmm. and even though uh, we have different accents. Mm -hmm. His success is that he, he uh, I can't say he made it, but he facilitated the unity of the Tunisians. The Tunisians that were united mm -hmm. between the 14th and the 17th of January, we all remember all those Lijan uh, Yeah. And this is something that I really insist upon. We need to go back to this life of the, the little neighborhood life, the little Homa al Homa, what we call it, you know, the little those residence associations and those residents together because we really have to insist on what brings us together and not what divides us. Marine Bourguiba, on this note, I'd like to thank you very much for coming. 
We answered Terry, thank you. I would like to thank His Excellency, the Ambassador of the United States, Mr. Gordon Gray, for this exclusive interview. The interview will be available uh, on the Facebook page and on YouTube tonight. Thank you very much for listening to RTC. Next, a news update in French and the Italian language program with the Maestro Murad Ayari. I would like to thank the Maestro Faisal Hilary. Stay tuned to RTC. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Atlantic side.